Hello and welcome back to SciTech. Tech. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a mini EMF meter with using the ATtiny85 microcontroller. Let's get started. And these are the items that you're going to need to make for this circuit. The items you're going to need is this wire, which will be the antenna, a perf board, a 3 volt button cell battery, a 3 volt button cell battery holder, an AT Tiny 85 microcontroller, an 8 pin IC socket holder, a push button lock switch, and three LEDs one green, one yellow, one red. Now let's go ahead and assemble the circuit and let's get started. First, I want to start with these three items. I want to place my button cell battery holder on the corner just like this, solder the pins into place, and I'm going to take my IC socket holder and put it into this orientation on the perf board, solder the first pin, make sure it's level, and then solder the rest of the pins into place. And there we go, it should look just like this. Next, I want to go ahead and test the LED so I know which color is which, because when they're clear like that, you can't tell. So what I'm going to do is place it into the perf board just like this, where I have the anodes facing the IC socket holder and the cathodes facing the battery. And there we go, push them in and bend the leads. Bend all the cathodes to face the common cathode of the button cell battery holder. There we go, all the LEDs will be ready to be grounded. Now I'm gonna go ahead and bend the anodes to the necessary pins of the IC socket holder. To pin zero, to pin one, and to pin two on the AT Tiny. Now we go ahead and solder it into place. Solder only one pin of the LEDs, so that way you can make the LEDs flush with the board by remelting the solder. There we go, and as you can see, the LEDs aren't very even. So what I'm going to do is push on all the LEDs and remelt the solder so that way the LEDs are flush with the board. There we go, just like that. And now solder the cathode pins in so that way the LEDs are permanently in place. Now solder the common cathode, cut off the excess, and there, the LEDs are now grounded. Now I'm going to make sure the anodes of the LEDs are touching the output pins of the AT Tiny. Cut off the excess. And there we go, solder bridge the anodes into place, which will be pin 5, 6, and 7 of the AT Tiny. There we go, she'll look just like this. There we go, five, six, and seven is now soldered to the LEDs. Now we're gonna go ahead and solder this antenna wire, which is on pin two of the AT Tiny, which will be the analog. There we go, solder bridge it together, just like that. And there you have it. Next, I'm gonna take a negative wire and solder it to pin four of the AT Tiny and solder it to the common ground, just like this. Common ground soldered and now soldered to the pin four. Next, I'm gonna take my push button lock switch and place it right next to pin eight of the AT Tiny, which is the VCC of the circuit. Solder it into place and then solder bridge it to pin eight and then solder the other pin to the positive of the battery. There we go, soldered into place, and now solder bridged just like this. Now I'm gonna take this wire here and solder it to the other pin of the switch, and then solder it to the positive of the battery. And there we go, it should look just like this. 
And there you have it. The circuit is now complete. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my AT Tiny and place it into the IC socket holder, just like this. And then my button cell battery. And there, the circuit is now complete. The device is now complete. Now let's go ahead and push the button and test it out. Ah, and it works. And there we go. Now let's go ahead and see if the soldering iron is putting off an EMF. Oh, it is. Getting closer and closer. Oh, it works. Perfect. Now I'll touch the wire to reset it. Now let's see if my phone puts off an EMF. And it does. Hmm. A lot, a lot stronger than the soldering iron. Interesting. Now let's go ahead and test out this wall adapter. Let's see if that's putting off an EMF. Oh, and it is. Hmm, interesting. And even the cable. And even the AC cable, putting off even stronger of a field. Interesting. Now let's go ahead and check out my lab bench power supply. And yes, this too is putting off an EMF. And as you can see, this is my first EMF detector that I made in a previous video. And as you can see, it's a lot more sensitive than my other one. If you want to see how I made this detector, check out in the link in the description below. What I'm curious about is, can an EMF detector detect another EMF detector? Let's see what happens. As you can see, nothing. That's very interesting. It's actually not picking up on each other at all. That shows me that you can be able to detect all kinds of EMFs from around the world and not pick up on itself. That's actually very useful, very necessary to have if you're wanting to measure and search for EMFs. That way you know your own device is not triggering itself. That's very useful. And there you have it. Now you know how to make a mini EMF detector with using an ATtiny85 microcontroller and a few other little components. And there you have it. Thank you for watching SciTitech. I hope you learned something new and don't forget to like and subscribe and of course click on the bell icon to be notified for future SciTitech videos. Till the next deck. Goodbye.